I think people play small by default. I think we're scared by default. I think we listen to other people's opinions too much by default. If you've got a dream for yourself that you have to cancel that small conversation in your head that's telling you all the reasons why you can't do it, you can't get started. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a baseball player in the season because Kelly Gruber was my favorite player of all time, third baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays. I wanted to be a baseball player during the season and a police officer in the off season. I was like, of course that's possible. Even though like, who's done that? Nobody. But I was going to do that because why not? Of course, that's possible because when you're a kid, everything is possible. And then what ends up happening is it gets put in you by your family, society, media, your school, etc. That's what you want to be. You can't do that. What single baseball player? First of all, you're never going to make it as a baseball player because the odds are ridiculously low. And then tell me one baseball player who's ever been also a police officer in the off season. Like that's not going to happen for you, Carmichael. And uh, the dreams get squashed out of us. And so I don't think that that's your voice. I think that voice is telling you that you can't do it is actually not your voice. Your voice is telling you that you're awesome and you're amazing. You can do whatever you want to do. It's the collective voice of society and pressures put on us that telling us that, no, we can't do this because we might fail and we might look bad and people might judge us. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I watch these videos every day because I need them for motivation. Being around successful entrepreneurs every morning helps me believe that I can do great things too. It's like your morning coffee, but for your goals, kickstarting your day with a blast of positivity. So here is a challenge for you. Try watching one video every morning for the next 30 days, and let's find out together if they help you do great things too. If you're in, leave a hashtag believe in the comments below so I can celebrate with you. So today, let's learn from me and my team's take on my top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two is build your reputation. You could make all of your videos long form in one day per month or in half a day per month. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. So that's, that's achievable to, to maintain your guitar brand. If you wanted to expand yeah. content, that may mean bringing on other people as well. And, and it could be even changing the name of the main channel to instead of it just being Lauren Bateman, it could be the Lauren Bateman Institute. Maybe that's too corporate, but the Lauren Bateman, I don't, I don't know, uh, Academy school, or yeah. Lauren yeah. Bateman Academy, <laughs> Lauren Bateman rock school, you know, I don't yeah. know, whatever you want to call it, which then you are the leader, but you don't have to be the only creator, but it's mm -hmm. still a guitar channel. Like if you didn't have this channel, who's going to buy your YouTube course? You kind of need to maintain it and build it and grow it. And the more that you build reputation authority there, the more everything else sells and does well too. Right. If you didn't have a passion for it, it's a different story. The fact that you still love doing it and it takes one day a month, half a day a month to make content, that's, that's achievable, right? It's not like you're in the studio every day making videos. We got to get you out. But transitioning the name to being a company and away from just being Lauren Bateman allows you to bring in more people, whether they're your students, whether they're other teachers. I mean, students are great mm -hmm. graduating students and people who've been, I'm trying to remember back to our airport conversation, but you had like, you had these beginners and then you had a second level. Is that still? Yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. we do. Have that. So, yeah. Okay. So pe taking people who um, graduated, from the higher level or your more advanced students and then having them uh, play a song, teach a song, share their experience, tell their story. Um, storytelling could be a big part of this of mm -hmm. somebody who, I mean, I don't know why you picked up the guitar. I don't know if you were very musical growing up or you had two left fingers. <laughs> 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 like those stories could inspire people as well. And so the stories of some of the students and how now they can pick up and play something even more advanced, but to hear their story. Like there's a lot of options you can make with the content, but you can't do it as long as you have to be the main person doing everything all the time. Rule number three is do your passion. If you're doing a podcast and you're doing an interview-based podcast like this, awesome. You better first off love interviewing people. Like if you don't like talking to people, you're not going to have much success. Like for people who say, I'll do whatever it takes. You won't do whatever. Like you're going to quit and give up. And you're going up against people who love doing it. So you're always going to lose. So if you're starting a podcast that's interview-based, amazing. Bring on people who you actually want to talk to. So reach out to guests, not just because they're some big name, but, but you actually care about their story 
and you want to ask them something. Next, make it really personal. Don't just ask the questions that you think your audience is going to care about. Treat it as a free coaching session for you. So when you're bringing somebody on, I don't even the intro, like it doesn't matter what the intro is. I don't need you to read my official okay. bio. <laughs> like the best thing, the best intro that you can give is what you like about the person. Hey, I brought Evan Carmichael on today because he is whatever, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because here's what happens. Most people will read the same intro. And I have, a, I have an intro. You can go to my website. You can find it. But if you lead your show with the same intro that everybody else has, you, you have the same intro as everybody else. Has. You have the same show that everybody else has. If you ask me the same 18 questions that everybody else asked me, there's nothing unique about your podcast. Yes. But if you make it unique to you to say, hey, Evan, I love you because uh, my show is about being unbreakable and you – broke your neck on your tour last year and kept going. And that, that made that I just love you for that. Awesome. Like that's a super unique uh, intro that nobody else has given me. And I also know that you've, you know, you care about my story. You've done your, even your first question, but asking about my speaking gig and people showed up, like you've done some homework um, and then make it a, a, a coaching session for you. It's like, what are you struggling with? What do you need help with? Uh, and, and then you get unique content that nobody else has, and that's how you start to win. So I think a lot of people who are doing podcasts or YouTube channels, they fall into that trap of trying to be professional and trying to like do it like everybody else does. And then now you just have a show like everybody else has, and you never actually win. Rule number four is be intentional. Whoever you look up to and, uh, and respect, you could be around them every day through their videos, through their books, through their podcasts. And no matter how great a day you have today, tomorrow you're waking up and, it, and it, you're starting over. You need, the, you need the daily reminder. And so you can be more intentional with what you're feeding into your brain. Most people wake up and they start scrolling. And there's no intentionality behind it. How much time have you wasted on Instagram just scrolling through content and it's not feeding you? And, and YouTube and other platforms, LinkedIn. But you can be intentional with who you follow and what you consume especially at the start of the day. Because if you start your day consuming the thing that makes you feel more belief, more confident, more bold, that's going to change the direction of that day. And you do that consistently, it's going to change the direction of your life. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight our favorite lessons from the video that will inspire you to remember what you learned today and actually apply them. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five is build a team. You already have five people, which are yeah. ready for a lot of people's like crazy. Yeah. How did you get to five people? <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Because I can't even pay myself. Right? Yeah. The idea of having a team is crazy, right? We're at 42 people now on my team, right? Um, and so a lot of the stuff, like I wouldn't be doing a lot of the stuff if if I didn't have team to help me with everything. Yeah. And so all of the problems become, uh, yes, they're problems, but they become team members who will solve it. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're building a brand that I'm going to teach you to become a mogul, yeah, then it's just expected that you're going to have team help you with all these yeah. things. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's fairly simple in terms of your first question. It's like, okay, yeah, the, it's, there's two brands for every platform. You can keep your name in it, Lauren Bateman, and then whatever, whatever mm -hmm. else comes after it. Because even the business side doesn't necessarily have to be you all the time. Rule number six is be a good storyteller. So the best stories that you say from stage are the ones where you are helping people first, right? Like the best stories that I've told are because I help people one-on-one -on -one first. Because when you're speaking live on stage to a group of people, you don't get a lot of fantastic feedback. Like you can kind of look at their faces and see what's going on, but they have a lot of thoughts and, and, and yeah, buts and what ifs in their head, but they're not expressing them. But when you sit down with somebody one on one, you get the feedback. You get to see, you get to see what they're thinking. You get to hear the real thoughts going on in their head. And so 
my best stories have come, the stories that I tell on stage, the stories I just told in Vegas, I've told countless times to, to people one-on-one, -on -one, and I know how to tell the story so that it moves them to a result. You can have a million different stories, and it's awesome that you're a storyteller. Stories, the, the point is to get people to move towards some kind of action. So the key is figuring out which story to tell in which context. So if, I'm, if you're going to go on stage and speak, what's the end goal that you want to have happen? And then what's the right story to tell in this situation? Rule number seven is discover your greatest strengths. I think everybody's the best in the world at something. Like you are the best in the world at something. And most people, one, don't believe that. They don't believe they're world class at something. The idea of being world class is, uh, is for, for, for the Steve Jobses of the world and all these other people. It's not like I can't be that level. Um, or they found something that they want to be great at, but they don't chase it down enough. Um, and so that's, that's what I think is the world's biggest problem. People don't believe in themselves enough. It's what I'm trying to every day uh, tackle and, and take on, and I'm never going to solve it, but I wake up every day trying to solve it. And I want to gift, uh, you know, that's going to, I guess, be my legacy or what I'm trying to work towards every day is for people to wake up and feel like I could be great at something. It may not be what my mom was great at or my dad or my teachers or the people around me, right? I'm like, I'm sure even for you, I'm sure your parents aren't podcasters, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you went to school for, you know? Uh, and so that's really hard. It's hard to break the mold. It's hard to say, I'm going to do something different. It's hard to be different. But we know we want to be. You don't look at your parents and you may love them, but you don't want the life they have. You don't want to be their age and be in their spot. You want something else, but it's really hard to go off on that ledge and say, I'm going to go off and be great. Like the world's greatest X when nobody in your circle, nobody in your town has done that. And that's why people stay small for life and never go off and accomplish great things. And that's what I'm trying to bust out. Rule number eight is expand your network. I want to have a cool environment and, um, you know, give some value. It's all about value. Right? I just want to be able to make sure the audience gets value and that we can grow our brand, share our message and get our access out to the people who can actually, you know, use this and yeah. we can help. Why do it? It's for the relationships. If you go to them and you ask for half an hour of their time and you end up filming for half an hour or an hour or whatever, you might get another two hours with them because right. they want to give you a tour of their office. And because, you know, you notice their signed football behind them and then that leads to a giant story or they take you to lunch or whatever afterwards. And that's the real value of doing it. Yes, you're getting content, but you're building the relationship where with a Riverside or a Zoom, it's, it's over. Like, okay, great to meet you, Matt. Yeah. Awesome. See you later. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not worth doing that for everybody. But again, for the, for the hundred people who you would love to be able to have in your network, then that is a, a it's a great aspirational play. Cause you know how to, for the people who are at your level, you know how to do it. For the people who are way above, like way above what's aspirational for you. Yeah. But then that becomes a real model and you should be a little scared, right? Like you're going to sit down with this person. Oh my God, it's great. Like this is how you start really building up a lot more access, which then their stories help your community. It's so much easier to hit them up for a show than to say, Hey, I'm going to be in New York. Do you want to have lunch? Right. Like, they don't right. want to. Have no, lunch I don't. No, I don't want to have lunch. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you even get a response. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not because you, it's just they're getting hit up with that request all day long. Rule number nine is seek clarity. If you know what you want to do, that's the time to focus and build and grow. Like if you want to build the number one podcast for entrepreneurs, great. Then when somebody says, hey, do you want to join me at truck driving school? You know, you say no, because you know what you want to do. You have the path. But if you don't know what you do and, and you like this, you know, you'll often go on these ebbs and flows. Whenever you don't know what to do, the best thing is to say, yeah, I'll join you at truck driver school. Yeah, 100%. Right? Like you go once and you see, yeah. right? Just like people who decide that pizza is their favorite food before they've tried sushi or burritos or anything else, mm -hmm. right? You want to taste it and try. So if you don't have clarity over what you want, you're not going to figure out what you want sitting on the couch. You got to get out there and do. But if you do have clarity over what you want, then, then that's the time to put the blinders on and focus. So I'm building this thing. Don't distract me with your other opportunities. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is surround yourself with success. If you want to improve your belief, you need to start surrounding yourself with people who make you feel that on a consistent basis. So if you're watching this show, episode six 
of uh, LinkedIn Live with Craig Siegel. Awesome. If this is doing anything for you, hey, give give Craig a follow. Give him a little recommendation on LinkedIn too. That those uh, always help. And and pay attention to future shows, right? Because if you surround yourself even virtually with people who make you feel better, who make you have more belief in yourself, that has this ripple effect out for the rest of your day. So the challenge, I think, for a lot of people watching, if you're if you're if you're a fan of Craig Siegel, you're probably the most ambitious person in your circle. Mm. You're probably the one who's pouring into other people. You're the one helping others. You're the one encouraging them to go do stuff. Like you, that's who Craig tends to attract in his community, and that's yeah. awesome. And keep doing that. But who's pushing you to do more? And you probably don't know somebody in your circle who's pushing you to do more. A lot of the things that we think um, we want to do, we're not, you don't have to commit to that. You know, you never, you not, you don't know what you're capable of in a one year, three year, five year, 10 year window. So instead of trying to strategize to your future self, we're going to try to strategize from our future self. And what I try to do is think about the Evan who's accomplished the thing that I want to accomplish and then try to talk to that guy and have future Evan give 2023 Evan some advice. Uh, John says, that's a very deep hearted quote. Uh, who first told you that uh, I was, I was at an event that I was at like, man, I really, that's really powerful. Uh, so here's what I do. And I invite you to do it with me. It'll take, you know, two to three minutes, not a ton of effort, energy, and I'd love to hear your results. So we're just going to relax, uh, close your eyes. Hopefully nobody's driving. If you're driving, keep your eyes open and whatever stress is in your body, just let it go. Take a deep breath in. And let it go. One more deep breath in. And just let it go. No stresses of the day. We're here. We're present. We're focused on making a kick-ass life for ourselves and business. And I want you to go to a moment in the future where you have accomplished the things that are on your list, whatever that looks like. You're going to look at yourself. Future you doesn't know you're there. We're kind of peeking into the future and we're hopping in on future you who's done the thing that you're so desperately trying to accomplish right now. You have the subscriber count, you're speaking on stage, you have the book deal, you have the revenue in your business or the number in your bank account. Imagine that you're looking at the future version of you who's done the things that 2023 you wants to do. And just look at future you and look at how happy you are and look at what you're doing and look at who's around you and just try to feel the joy of being future you. And you did it in the right way. You did it without scamming people. You did it in a way that's authentic to you. You, you can be proud of how you got there and just sit there and kind of feel the energy and the joy and the happiness of like, you did it. You did it. You made it. And then future you now sees you and, and says, come over here. And you're going to go and talk to future you. And you're going to ask, hey, how did you do this? How did you accomplish this goal? How did you make this happen? And future you whispers in your ear the answer. And is telling you exactly what you need to do to get to that goal and to get there even faster than how they did it. And when you've got your answer, you can come out of it. This is again a process I use that, that can be super quick. I don't know how long that took. My eyes were closed. I didn't time it. But try to imagine I've already accomplished the goal. I've already done the thing. And now I'm talking to the future Evan who's done it. Momentum is a thing that most people are missing. And we're living in fear because we don't want to fail. And so we think we have to have the perfect plan. Where the ultimate failure is doing nothing. And so you need to go and take imperfect action, whatever that looks like, whatever the first thing is. And if you can commit to somebody else, even better. If you can commit to somebody else, like tomorrow, let's go to the gym together or you message somebody, say, will you be on my podcast, right? And then they say, yes. 
even the next day when you wake up, it's like, what did I just do? Yeah. I don't want to go to the gym. I, I don't, I can't interview this person for my, are you kidding me? I can't, but you said yes. Yeah. So now you, you have to follow through. You do. Right? Yeah. And so that is the most important thing because the first step is the hardest step. And once you start building momentum, then planning can, can take shape, but it's not the first step. And so we've all had these moments of boldness. And so it's acting when you have those moments of boldness because they will be fleeting. What is the common denominator that you find, um, you know, through all these successful entrepreneurs? Uh, for me, it always comes down to belief, belief in that they can do it. Uh, now I might, I'm, I see the world to the lens of believe anyway. To so believe I, you know, I surprised, but like, <laughs> it just, I love a it. lot of the people who've had tons of success, like they, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be there. Like you shouldn't be doing yeah. what you're doing from where you came from and what you went through. It's like, you shouldn't be here doing this. Like eight year old Joe is like, what are you doing? That's not possible. <laughs> and you're here. True. That, right. And so you're already, in, you're an impossibility to younger you, let alone an impossibility like to the world. And so Successful yeah. entrepreneurs just believe that this thing can happen, even though logically it doesn't make sense. And when people tell you this doesn't make sense, they're right. You know, they yeah. are right. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't make sense. And you, but you believe in yourself that you're just going to go off and do it. Um, that's the one. Two, I would say they start, they build momentum. Like they just create, they go, it, even though it doesn't make sense. They're not going to overthink it for the next 20 years before they decide. Like, I'm going to go get funding. I'm going to find an option. And then poof, here comes Joe. Right, we're like they, they didn't have that connection. They didn't know what they were doing. They just started, and then if I had a third, it'd be that they, they just kept going. You know, it's like yeah. I'm not, one one bank tells me no, I'm not going to get funding. Cool, I'm going to keep searching until I find an option. I tell myself that great ideas flow through me. That great ideas will flow through me because it came through me. Then it's a great idea, and what that does is kind of shortcut the brain from overanalyzing, and over preparing and overthinking that as long as you're in a good emotional state, right? Like, like if you're frustrated or pissed off or upset or jealous, maybe don't trust the ideas that come to you. You know, like if somebody cuts you off in line or in traffic and you want to go chase it, like maybe think on that one. <laughs> but, but if you're in a, in, if you're in a positive place, if you're watching this episode and you feel inspired or hopeful, or, or you want to do more, you're grateful trust the ideas that come to you because those ideas often don't make sense like your next great idea doesn't make sense because your brain tries to make sense of it but it doesn't make sense but your heart wants to do it so it's it's listening to your heart and just trusting that great ideas flow through you the belief and the motivation to get going at the beginning i think we need to focus on why and then you move to the how and then as you graduate you move to the who so it's like why to how to who where if you look at where you're at now you're focused on the who you know, you're like, who, who can help me get to where I need to go? Who do I hire to help me with my YouTube strategy? Who do I, because you're already a successful entrepreneur and you know that you can't do this all by yourself. But at the beginning, it's much more about the why. Like, why is this so important to you that you have to get up and do this? And the environment, I think, is the thing that holds most people back. Most people's environment has been perfectly created to keep them where they are. And so the environment is the, the people in your family, your friend circle, what you're listening to, every day, what you, you know, who you follow on social media and why I made my channel was I wanted every day to be around people who push me to believe more in me. So I want Steve Jobs in my ear every day. I want Elon Musk in my ear every day. I want people like Walt Disney who've done amazing things in my ear every day. And so that's why I started my channel for me, selfishly. Um, if you guys are watching this and you love Sean and you respect everything he's built, great. He's got lots of content, like subscribe to the channel. And watch a video every day because if you started your day with a Sean video, you're going to start to think like Sean. You're going to start to think differently. You're going to start to have a little more belief and to be able to see someone like Sean do it makes you think, huh, maybe I can do it as well. And so the, the number one thing I think I would change for most people is just the habits in the environment. What are you doing every day? Because entrepreneurs will often get really excited for a moment and then you wake up the next day and all the energy is gone and... Uh, you don't believe in yourself anymore. You can't do it. And so it's like brushing your teeth. You got to do it every day. You got to be in an environment with people and books and podcasts and YouTube videos that make you feel like your big dream is possible. And if you did that every day, you'll start to, you'll start to see the shift. I think anything great in life is going to come on the other side of fear. If you're only doing things that you're not afraid of at all, you're not doing anything great.
if you think about the, the best things that you've done in life, things that you're most proud of, it came with a healthy dose of fear. Like you were afraid to do something and then whether it worked out or whether it didn't, like you took the step and you can be proud of that. And so anytime that you want to, you know, if you want to live a meaningful life, you want to be happy, you know, it's going to come with having fear. And I don't think it's just, I don't think you can eliminate fear. I don't think, I don't think it's actually healthy. I don't think you should be off saying, well, I have no fear. Like, no, like this fear, I recognize that I'm going to be afraid to do it and I'm going to do it anyway, because I want to reach the other side. So for me in my first business, I was 19 years old. Uh, I turned down a huge job to start this company. I was making $300 a month, you know, I was, wasn't feeding myself properly. And, uh, you know, all just not a, not a fantastic life. Um, but I, I wanted to see this business succeed. And for me, it was really the fear of regret. I, I could deal with the business not working and me having to go back and get a job. I couldn't deal with me getting a job and then not knowing what happened with that business. Like, what if I just stayed there? What if I tried that? What if I said yes? What if I, I didn't want to live with an entire lifetime of regret. And so I used the fear of regret to motivate me to go and do the thing that I was afraid of doing because I didn't know if it would, I, nobody in my family was an entrepreneur. I wasn't really an entrepreneur. I had no business background. I had no education. You know, all of the things were, you know, against me on paper, but uh, I just made the, f the, uh, the future fear bigger than the current fear. And that motivated me to go off and try it. And it's one of the things I'm most proud of. Like what I did in my first business stood on the other side of that fear. My, my fear to get going, my fear to say no to that big job, my fear of, you know, my friends judging me for failing. I succeeded. And that is one of the highlights, right? Any major thing that you're going to do in your life, the things that you will be the most proud of and want to tell your grandkids about is going to come after you conquer some fear. If you want to be selling coaching services, I had to see you coach. Mm -hmm. You were talking to the camera about how to use the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you're a good coach. Mm -hmm. You know, Wayne Gretzky could be a great hockey player. Was he a great coach? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Was he a good coach? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. He coached Team Canada, but yeah. I don't know if he's any good. He helps with the Oilers for sure. So. Okay. So, but like a lot of the best players yeah. actually suck at coaching. That's right. Yeah. It could be great that you've had the success, but it doesn't mean you can teach me. Yeah. So show me you coaching. Okay. So I, we're actually doing it right now. Like yeah. I'm coaching. Yeah. So you just flip it. Yeah. So you take people who are either in the program already and go deeper with them mm -hmm. uh, or, or they're part of your group coaching. Mm -hmm. Actually, even how, how do we do this? You're in Movement Makers. Mm -hmm. You're paid to be in Movement Makers. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a group environment with everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we have this opportunity that comes up. We took four people mm -hmm. and we're doing one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. If you had your group, there would be people who want to do one-on-ones. Yeah. And then I get to see you coaching. Right. And there's no prep. Right. Because the prep is your years of experience. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're going to ask me coming in here, right? This, yeah. That's the prep. If you came in and asked me about Edmonton or something, I have no answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're asking me things that I should have an answer to. Yeah. And so it makes them feel great. Yeah. It's usually more fun to make because you're actually talking to somebody instead of just talking to yeah. a camera. Yeah, yeah. And it helps showcase the caveat is you actually have to be a good coach. For like sure. If you suck at coaching, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Right? You know, hopefully you're great and yeah. you share, you show off how great you are. Yeah. That also is great conversion for your landing page. So when it says your, you know, Ben landing page for coaching, yeah. instead of just testimonials, actually you, you get to see you, coaching. Yeah, totally. right? Like yeah. here's, here's Ben in action. Right. And we can see you do what you do. Right. So it's a conversion tool as well. Cool. It's great for your email list. Yeah. So when people sign up for your email list, they download your $7 thing or yeah. free thing or whatever. Yeah. In the autoresponder sequence, they can also see you coaching people. Oh, he's a coach. Right. And when people see themselves in the person yeah. that you're coaching, then yeah. like, oh, if he can help her, maybe he can help me. For sure, yeah. Right? So it's, you're, it's a it's sales pitch without any sales. Why I didn't resonate with a lot of the common advice, because a lot of my contemporaries, one of the biggest things that they will say is, don't compare yourself to others. It's mm -hmm. toxic. Never compare yourself to others. And I'm like, really? I don't know. I like comparing myself to others, but I realize that most people just don't do it in a healthy way. I mean, even my, yeah. my YouTube channel, the very first videos were the channel is called Modeling the Masters. It's like, hey, how can you learn from Steve Jobs and Oprah Winfrey and Warren Buffett and all these people to help you become better? And so I think that the danger is most people, when they compare themselves to others, 
they push themselves down. So, oh, well, I can't do this because Cyrus is already doing it, and he's got a better voice than me. He started 20 years ago, and he asked great questions. Like, I'm just getting started, and I suck. I can never be like Cyrus. And so we use that to beat ourselves down, push ourselves down, where I think if you look to somebody, if somebody wants to get started in broadcasting and they look at Cyrus, they can say, man, look what Cyrus did. If he can do it, I can too. And you use that as a push forward. But I think the key thing is you need a push. Like if you don't have any frame of reference, if you don't know that it's possible, most people stay stuck. And so the key is not to stay stuck. Don't push yourself down, but use inspiration from your heroes to push yourself forward into gear to say, hey, if they can do it, I can too. And I could probably get there faster because it's only easier to get going now. If you want to do amazing things in your life, who do you tell that to? Yeah. Like probably nobody, like maybe your spouse and hopefully they're supportive. (laughs) Uh, But a lot of us don't have anybody. And so when you can, whether you create your own group uh, or find the group that's actually your people, it's so amazing. It's great. Uh, And so I've been fortunate to be in a bunch of rooms and also I I like being able to bring people together uh, in our program. So it's, it's, not so much about me, although I hopefully have something to share when I'm leading things, yeah. but also like, I want you to meet, I want Sarah to meet John yeah. and like, they're going to, and people start businesses together and stay in touch together. Like you talk about the mastermind. Um, yeah. I do this four time a year mastermind group for thought leaders. You have to be a thought leader creating content. Um, and for the women in the group, all share the same house. So like they get an Airbnb and they're all from different countries. Yeah. Uh, Norway, Canada, United States, and, and another United States in a different state. And every every time they're booking, they share an Airbnb. And the four of them take over this house. It's like they created amazing friendship. It's not even just about a business relationship, but they do shows together and, and yeah, help each other out. But like they formed friendships where it's really hard to make friends as an adult. You know, like how do you make new friends? We don't really a lot you know once you're out of school how do you make new friends um and so i love being able to bring people together and you know we have a message and and, and some education we'll share but the best part for me is learning how they've connected with each other as opposed to just learning what i had to teach every major breakthrough that i've ever had in my life has come from breaking through a limiting personal belief that I've had. And also, I guess, beliefs of other people put on me, mostly though my own. I think it depends on how much you like listen to other people for feedback or not, or how much of your self-worth comes from other people. So as an example, my first company when I was 19, I had a software company and I was sucking at the start, $300 a month, you know, not able to survive. And the biggest thing that helped me back there was I thought, I'm 19, I'm selling scientific software. I sucked at science in school which is true. It was my worst subject. I'm selling to people who are two to three times my age. They'll never listen to me. And I told myself that story. I was just unconscious of it. Like most of these beliefs you have are unconscious. It's not something that you actively are aware of. You telling yourself for the most part, they're unconscious. And it wasn't until I broke through and realized that they don't care how old I am. They don't care what I studied in school. All they care about is, can I help them with the problem they're facing? And it was yes, like I could, our software could actually help them. And so that started to open up conversations and it started getting some sales. In my business now, one of the biggest limiting beliefs I had was when brands started approaching me. I remember Microsoft was one of my first clients and I was all happy and excited when Microsoft wants to work with me. I said, well, who am I to work with Microsoft? Like I'm one guy, Microsoft has huge budgets and insane number of teams. And what can I offer Microsoft? And then I realized after talking to them, like, oh, I can, I can offer a ton. <laughs> I can offer a ton to these guys. And so I think we hold ourselves back a lot from these projects that we could do because of the story that we tell ourselves. And the first step is having awareness of that challenge, uh, awareness that we're holding ourselves back, awareness that we're not kind of blaming somebody else for why we can't do this or blaming our circumstances or blaming our government or the economy or your education or whatever. Because as long as you tell yourself that story, you're always going to be held where you are. A mindset is a daily thing. You know, I'm talking to you. I feel great. The rest of the day is going to be amazing. I talked to Lee Benson. I was on a show. It was awesome. I'm going to tell Nina. It's going to be great. And then wake up tomorrow. Like, what day is it? What am I doing again? What happened? It's like, at least for me, it's, it's like a, it's a reset every day. So no matter how great today is tomorrow, I'm starting over. And so that's why successful people have their routines, whatever it is that you need, whether it's 
you know, the health routine with working out and cold plunging and sauna and uh, all the fun gadgets you've got at your place. Um, the mindset stuff of, of reading a book or journaling or going for a walk or listening to content, like whatever the thing is, it gets you feeling the belief in yourself to go do something amazing today, putting that into your morning routine so that you feel the bold. If you don't feel it, you're not going to do anything. So getting the feeling first thing in the morning, not like 11 o'clock at night, you happen to watch some video, you get all inspired, then you go to bed and you kind of start over the next day. I think everybody, if you're a human being, you have core values. You have something that you really very, makes you different than somebody else, right? Like what you find most important to the world is going to be different than other people. And I think when you understand what is really important and meaningful to you, then you can go and build a life that you want and build a business for the entrepreneurs out there too. So if, if you're... You know, if you're about imagination, as an example, you know, I, I see the creative art behind you, the, the anime and your, your, your fun intro that uh, I haven't seen before on YouTube channels, right? Like if you go all in on imagination, as an example, then it just allows you to be more free. It reduces the chains that, you know, people may put on you to say, well, Johnny, we expect you to be like this. And like, well, no, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I have I know what I'm about. And a lot of people, they don't know what they're about. And so when they say, John, I need to go do this, you're like, oh, okay, I guess I need to go do that because my parents think I should or because my school teacher thinks I should or because my culture thinks I should or whatever it is. And so you end up making all these decisions in your life based on what other people want for you instead of actually just knowing what you want for yourself. I don't think enough people know what they want for themselves. And so they don't go off and do anything about it. Uh, and so that's what the book tries to uncover, figure out the one thing that you stand for so that you can go off and live a life that is with meaning, with purpose. And for the people who want to become entrepreneurs as well, there's a guideline on how to apply your one word to your business. Do you see perfectionism as a positive habit, a negative habit? And I'm kind of curious for you, have you ever wrestled with that? Uh, I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> uh, I, I, I lost a $40 million deal when I was 22 because of it. And ever since it's been, it's been a fight to, to not have that in me. And so if it was me 10 years ago, it would have been, okay, Alan, what are all your questions? I need to know in advance the questions you're going to ask me because I, I want to, my biggest fear is disappointing people. I don't want to show up on your show, on somebody's stage, on a video and disappoint people. And so it leads to a lot of perfectionism that everything has to be perfect. And I made all of the same mistakes that everybody makes at the beginning of overthinking and over planning, over strategizing and over analyzing and then nothing happens. And so if this show was 10 years ago, I would have I would have asked for a list of all your questions in advance because I wanted to make sure I had a great prepared answer. The problem with that is I, I could give you great answers, but it would be practiced and would be rehearsed and it wouldn't be authentic back to your word. You know, it'd be have a you'd have a, a practice answer, but not, you know, the real answer. And so it was really scary for me. And it was a process that I slowly went through to trust in the moment and to trust that all my preparation has led me to here and what I'm doing right now. And then trust that even if the next step sucks, I'll figure it out. And if you can trust that great ideas flow through you and to let go of how it has to happen in a certain way, then great things will come to you. Think about the Alan from five years ago. Would Alan from five years ago think that Alan would be here right now today doing this? Probably not. Whatever you had on your, your life plan or vision board, like here's where I'm gonna be in five years. If we go back five years ago, you probably wouldn't say you'd be here. And so what makes us think that we can plan for the next five years? And like Alan now has no idea what Alan is capable of doing in the next five years. Not if you're growing and learning, right? If you could actually predict where you're going to be in five years or 10 years, it means that you are thinking small compared to what you're capable of doing. And so it's letting go of the perfect plan. It doesn't mean that you do zero planning ever. Planning can be important, but it's definitely not the first step. And it's not judging yourself and having a perfect plan before you start, which is all the mistakes that I made and just try to make it a little bit easier for the next generation. How many times you go through your phone and you spend an hour on Instagram and you feel worse about yourself than when you started? Yeah. So you lost an hour and now you feel worse about yourself too. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Or you're triggered. Right? right? Yeah. And that's you're setting yourself up for a negative day and you've just lost an hour in the morning. As opposed, so, okay, so all those people make you feel worse about yourself, unfollow them. You get the pick.
And the ones who make you feel better about yourself and powerful and more self belief follow those people. Because then you'll be inspired when you load your phone and then want to go off and do things. And so your environment's been perfectly designed to keep you where you are. And if you want to grow, you change your environment. Now, this is something that our parents didn't have access to. Right. Right. I'm 43. My parents at 43 didn't have the internet. It wasn't possible. They were a product of their environment, which is their their parents and their community, and maybe it was on the TV, but it's very limited and very forced on you, right? It's like the, whatever you grew up with, that's kind of what your environment is. And to move to a new city or to become an entrepreneur or whatever, you had to be a crazy person. Yeah, right. But now, whatever you're into, there's people creating content. Your tribe is online. To, like, chances are you don't want to do what your parents did. Oh, and even still me, like, well, like, well, well, if we're talking to like the next generation, but right. but even even us, like even me at 43, I don't want to, I don't want to, from 43 to 83, I don't want to live the life my parents did for 43 to 83. Right. And it's not because they had a bad life; it's just they didn't have options. Right. We have options. You can do whatever you want. And so the belief, how do you start to instill the belief that that's possible? Well, you choose to surround yourself with people who are going off and doing it. Why is this idea of finding your purpose, whatever you want to call it, like why is that so important for someone who's trying to develop the reputation? I think it's just important in general, not just to uh, establish your reputation. I think the Fair. reputation becomes a byproduct of you living a life that you love. So I think most people wake up, feel like they know they're capable of more. They know they want to contribute. Serving others, helping others hits the same part in your brain as having food and having sex, which are important. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> so it's hardwired into you. You like helping other people, but there's also there's different levels. So, you know, holding the door for somebody is great. It'll make you feel a little bit happy or buying a coffee for the person behind you in line. But when you can see somebody who is a younger version of you in terms of maybe not age, but they're going through something that you went through and you know that you can be the spark or be a source of hope or inspiration or belief for them and help them get out of their hole, that will fill you up in a way that holding the door for somebody won't. And so it's important as a human to realize that you're capable of great things and you're capable of having a giant impact on people. Either the world, you want to serve you know, the planet or you want to serve the 25 closest people to you. But if you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. And then out of the byproduct of serving others and knowing how you're meant to serve, then that becomes your reputation, right? So I believe in people. I think everybody has Michael Jordan level talent at something. And so I, that's what I want people to find in themselves. And I want to be a bit of a catalyst to help that on every show I do, every video I make, every Instagram post I put up. I'm trying to find different ways and different angles to help people believe more in themselves because I think it's the world's biggest problem. I think the right. world's biggest problem is people don't believe in themselves enough. So as a result of finding that now has become my reputation or my brand. The other week, I'm walking to my salsa studio. Since you have a salsa studio, not a salsa, you got a dance studio. I'm walking. I, I got beats on, right? I'm like, uh, I'm like dancing on the seat and taking the side streets. And then I get close to the main street, right? And there's people there. So instead of being like this, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Slow it down. Like, hey, let's, let's, like, let's chill a bit, right? Not doing like crazy stuff on the street. And most of the time, for most people, that's just an instinctive reaction, right? That's what happens. You don't even process that that was a limiting behavior, right? Like, what do I care what these people think, right? I'm in my zone. I'm happy. I'm grooving. And now I'm going to stop because these people are looking at me. I'm not going out of my way to make them feel bad or like put something in their face. I'm just trying to be me. And when I realized that this was like last week, two weeks ago, I said, OK, this is uncomfortable for me. I'm going to do it. So then as soon as I saw myself slowing down, like, no, turn it up. And then I'm back in the like, middle of the street, just doing my thing, dancing and moving. And the, the more you practice it, the more you build that muscle of breaking through those limiting beliefs, uh, those limiting behaviors, the easier it is to catch again. The biggest problem is awareness. Most people don't even know what's holding them back. So as soon as you can catch it, then it's having the guts to do something about it. Because if you don't, then you live in regret. Then it's like, ah, I wish I didn't do that, right? Ah, I wish I had the confidence to do it. Because in the, in the moment, you were too scared to actually take action on it, right? And so awareness and then have the guts to do something about it. Even something small gives you the little bit of strength to do something bigger the next time and bigger the next time. As a recovering perfectionist, attesting to the campaign, what does being in perfectly perfect mean to you now, Evan? It's, it's um, looking at yourself with kindness and recognizing that the mistakes you made in the past you did the best you could with what you had. 
You know, like I think a lot of us spend so much time looking backwards and say, Oh, I wish I did this. I wish I, I did. I wish I started this then. I wish I talked to her and told her this. And we just are constantly living with regret of what we wish we should have done or feel or judged ourselves or should, should have done. And so it's looking back with kind of eyes to say, you, you just, you did the best you could with what you had. Yeah. If you knew what you knew now, you would have done better. Yeah. But like at the time you did the best you could. And then it's, you now you have the capability to create something new and you, there may be a period of grieving for the life that you lost or, or something that you lost, but now it's okay. you you are awesome and you can create something amazing. And the fact that you're uh, imperfect is the greatest gift of all, because if you're, the same as everybody else. Well, look at everybody else. <laughs> are they happy with their lives? How many people are love their life? How many people wake up and drive to a job that they're just super jazzed about doing? Right? Not many. And so why do you want to be like them? And it's then having the courage to then go off and find your thing because it's so much easier to fit into the textbook version of something instead of having the courage to deviate from the path and start to launch your own thing. I feel like disciplines key to you know keep things going growing and obviously that momentum yeah i mean for discipline I, I, the the easiest thing for me is just to have a calendar and i think successful people or at least the ones i know have a calendar and a routine so nobody i know wakes up and says it's going to be an amazing day i'm going to change the world Let's go, right like that's what we think you of. don't we, do we, that no i don't do that i don't do that joe you don't either right i mean it's like we, we see these people on youtube and instagram and just think man they just wake up and it's always rainbows and it's everything is just amazing. yeah and they're the greatest entrepreneur and the greatest father and like in the greatest. And they don't work and, right? and they never work and it's just right that's what we think right but but the difference is uh. just the habits and routines right so what do you do when you wake I wake up and I, I might be tired. I might've had a rough night. I, I still get up and I go do the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. And so whenever I want to, I think, I think um, there are moments where you have to, you have to bring in the discipline because you're tired or there's something else. So there's a shiny object over here that you want to go off and do. But I think if you're always, if you're always relying on willpower, you're eventually going to fail where the yeah. calendar is a thing that ends up saving you. Right. So I'm here right now with you because it's in my calendar. If it wasn't in my calendar, well, like, same here. <laughs> yeah, it's like we both would have forgot about it. <laughs> or, be, or beyond this, some other thing that's popping up, right? And so we tend to schedule in things with other people, but we don't tend to schedule, or at least people who are first learning this don't schedule things in for themselves. Like time for you to work, time for you to write your book, time for you to be creative, time for you to brainstorm the next five years of your business, time with your wife and with your kids, time for yourself to do your whatever, your meditation, your yoga, your sauna, your cold plunge, like we'll often just abandon all those things and focus only on business stuff that rely yeah. with other people. Um, but if you can then create a calendar that fits your whole life, that's, that's the unlock for me. I get a great idea. I talk to you, I get inspired. If it's a habit that I need to keep doing, you're going to tell me about some new infrared something I need to go off and do. Great. Uh, it's a great idea. Who exciting. If it's not on my yeah. calendar, like it's never going to happen. It's not happening. Yeah. It's not, it's happening. not happening. Nothing happens though until you do something about those ideas, right? Like right. if they're just, you get the motivation, you come to this session here. It's great. You might be motivated, but nothing happens until you take some kind of action. Nothing changes. You stay at your nine to five until you start making some changes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so how I, um, approach it personally is you've got these big visions for where you want to go and big ideas you want to create. Amazing. How do you then break that down to what's the first thing you need to do as your next step, which might be how do you get out of your nine and five? Like, how do you start making money? How do you make more coaching clients coming in so that you can leave the nine to five? Or right. go to two days a week at the nine to five. I don't know how flexible they are and like paring down hours or whatever. But how do you start making this your full time thing? Right. Bef before having to worry about having a team and having 14 coaches underneath you and going on a speaking tour around America and launching your 80th book or like all of the, I don't know what, what's on your list, but like all these amazing things that you could go off and create. That doesn't happen as long as you're still at the nine to five. So like the first step is how do we get out of the nine to five? And 
it's not saying no to the other ideas. It's just not yet. There's a sequence. So what's the sequence of ideas that I need to follow so that I can actually start to achieve my goals? Because if you were able to leave your nine to five, now you have a lot more time to work on these other goals that you got set for yourself and these other ideas that you have for yourself. Let's go. So 2014, you were 9,400 subscribers after five full years. Okay. So I'm five years in on doing this and I got 9,000 subscribers, right? Okay. So for a lot of people, it's like, man, I suck. You know, like I'm, I, this is not, it's not working. This is, this is not good. I, I, I need to quit. Um, I had a lot of things working against me that I'd be able to do a lot faster now. Um, I was, uh, I'm still am, you know, introverted, shy, was afraid to ask for help. Um, never thought I would be good on camera. Like all of these things, nobody cares about my message. Nobody would want to see me. Uh, I couldn't watch my first 350 videos back without being completely embarrassed of myself. So I never watched it back. The only thing I had going for me, Sean, was I just kept going. I, I, I just, I just kept, I didn't watch my videos and never asked for help, but I like, I just kept going. And my focus, I never, I never thought I was going to be big. Like when I started, nobody had a million subscribers. YouTube famous wasn't a thing. And I'm making educational content. Like nobody was making educational content. Um, so it's not like I knew it was going to work out that I didn't know it at all. I just focused on who I was serving that if, if 50 people watched my video, that's 50 people that watched my video. Like if I was, if I was to go to a library or something to give a speech and 50 people showed up, I would be nervous that 50 people were there to watch me speak. Oh my God. But because it's online now we think that, Oh, those people don't count. So I always just focus on who I, who I was serving instead of who I wasn't serving because the, who I'm not serving game never ends, right? It's like, well, why aren't you at 100,000 subscribers, Sean? Or why aren't you at a million subscribers or 10 million subscribers or 100 million? You know, like the who you're not game never ends. And, and as entrepreneurs, we're wired for growth anyway. You know, like we're, you're going to be, you're aggressive. You're going to get there. You don't need help in, the, in that side of things. It's more like, hey, it's not happening fast enough. So I always focus on who I was serving instead of who I wasn't. If there's no doubt, you're seeing like beyond the shadow of a, if there's no doubt, then it's too small. Mm. I mean, if you knew 100% that you could do it, you're not dreaming big enough. Mm. There's, there's lots of things that you can do with no doubt. You could tie your shoelace with yeah. no doubt, but who cares? I mean, that used to be a big thing. It did. When you were, how, I don't know, what <laughs> age, five years yeah. old? When do you learn to tie a shoelace? You're like, you're like, I don't know if I can do this. I can't do this. I don't know how to do it. And then all of a sudden you did it. And now, uh, now it's nothing. It's easy. Um, and that will always be there just for bigger things. Mm. You know, like you look at, when, when did you say you went to Brendan's thing? Was it five years mm, ago? I think my first time was 2017. Mm-hmm. Okay, so seven years ago. Um, you go back to Sarah 10 years ago mm-hmm. compared to Sarah now. Yeah. It's like it's not possible. I, I, would, I would say that, yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what are you doing? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. There's no way. Mm-hmm. You're doing all this stuff? You're, you have a podcast? Mm-hmm. What? You can't do that. So you're already an impossibility to yourself, let alone other people. You, you have created an impossible life to yourself, yeah. to younger mm-hmm. you, right? Like if, if you from 10 years ago looked at you right now, it's like, that's not possible. Like, here's your future. No, that's not going to happen. That's not me. I can't do that. <laughs> right? And it's actually happened. So like, it's the same thing. Like you're going, going forward, you're going to continue to create more impossibilities for yourself. And the fact that there is doubt means that you're on the right path. It doesn't mean that you uh, succumb to it. Yeah. Uh, especially consistently. Everybody's going to have bad days, bad moments. But the fact that there is doubt means you're on the right path mm. and you're thinking big mm. and creating a new impossibility for yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's one. It's like, don't, that, w- it's normal. You're human. That's part of being an achiever. We always feel like, we should be doing more. We can be doing more. And that's an amazing drive because if you always felt like you're good and doing everything that you could, you'll, you'll probably stay small and stay comfortable. And that's where most people are stuck. The, the, the downside of that is then it leads to guilt and then it leads to anxiety. Then it can lead to overworking. It can lead to burnout. Um, the, the way that I've solved it, because I feel the same thing, is through the calendar. And so it's great that Tanya from Future came back and said time management. Because what often happens is if you have a problem that's unresolved, 
uh, we want to resolve it. You know, like we've got this, this is problem. I need to solve it. And it can, if you ever have problems sleeping at night or you're staying up or you're, you're supposed to be doing something else, but now all you can do is think about this thing because it's bothering you that can ruin your day. It can ruin the structure. An easy way to actually get around it is you schedule in when you're going to solve that problem. This has worked tremendously well for me. Uh, at night, for example, if I come up with ideas, I don't know if you guys ever get ideas, you get this great idea or this big problem just before going to bed and then you can't sleep when you're tossing to like, oh, I gotta, I, gotta, you know, I gotta figure that out, right? Even today, uh, last night, thinking about movie makers, what am I, how am I gonna present this tomorrow? If you schedule in a time in your calendar that is is feasible for you, it's not like a big stretch, what that does is help the brain feel like it's done. It helps close the loop. It helps have completion to it, which then will allow you to sleep or to be present for your kids or to be focused on your videos or something else. So the key then becomes to create a calendar that matches the ambitions that you have in business and life. And what we often do is only schedule in our business stuff as opposed to scheduling in everything. So if you want to be more present with your kids, Cool. Well, when in your calendar is being present with kids, right? Mm -hmm. And if that was in there, then you wouldn't stress as much during the day that you're not present with the kids because you know that tonight I'm going to spend two hours with my kids. And if you're worried about making videos or whatever the business problem is, you got to hire somebody new, or maybe you have to fire somebody on the team or whatever business stress comes up. If there's no spot in the calendar where that's going to get resolved, your brain often goes into overdrive, like, oh my God, oh my God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to solve it? And we try to solve the problem now. Where if you had a spot in the calendar to say, I'm going to solve this problem tomorrow at nine o'clock, your brain can accept that. It's, it's a weird thing. Like, try it. It gives some closure for your brain because your brain is looking for closure and then allows you to get back to the thing that you were going to do. I think you have to combine the inspiration with the action. And so you could, you could pick up Lee's book and learn from it and get inspired. Like, oh my gosh, I want to build a $300 million company too, right? Or I want to learn how to, right? Or, or me this morning going on my walk and listen to Zig Ziglar, right? Like I get inspired. I get a lot of ideas. Great. But Zig's not going to do the work for me, right? He's not coming back to then help me grow and do my next step, hire my next teammate, grow my channel, make more content. So the whole point of that, that inspiration is then to, make you more courageous to then go and take action and hopefully the right action. And so where, where most people get stuck is they don't do anything. They just feel it's hopeless. So step one is, okay, we need to, we need to inject hope and possibility and belief into you, which could be a video, a book, a podcast, uh, a, you know, a word from a friend. Cool. And then we got to start taking action and consistent action. Nothing happens without dedicated, consistent, action. Not every step is going to be perfect. You're going to make tons of mistakes along the way, but most important is that you did something about it. You took the consistent action. So that combination of having the right mindset plus the action. So everybody's going to have a different version of balance, how much yeah. time you want to spend, like what makes a good father? You know, Brandon has his version and Michael Jordan has his version and I have my version and we tend to compare ourselves against other people, which can be really detrimental because we usually kick ourselves down instead of forward. So the key is then thinking, well, what does my version of balance look like? for me. And so how much time you want to spend with your kids? How much time you want to spend with your wife? How much time you want to spend in your business? How much time you want to spend volunteering? Whatever is important to you, working out, there's no right answer, but there's a right answer for you. And so the purpose should be baked into everything. The purpose is not just a, here's what I'm going to do in my business and I'm going to shut it off when I go home. I think you have to understand why you're doing things, like not just a, a wedding or a marriage or anything. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you having kids? Why are you starting the business? Why are you in this job? Why are you doing a podcast? Like, what's the why behind the thing? And the more you can get clear on the why behind the thing, you're talking about creating multi-generational wealth of people. Like, if you understand the why and you align with the why, it's a lot easier to make uh, good decisions. Where most of the time, if you, most of the people don't even think about the why deeply. And then when you get down to it, it's like, well, why, why do we want to do a wedding? Well, you've been culturally conditioned to do it, or you want to show off in front of your friends, or you, like, if it's really just a celebration of your love, okay, well, do you need to have, you need to spend however many thousands of dollars to do that?
most people have a big dream. They have something they want to try. They're curious about something. And they have the heart and they have the soul and they're a good person and they're doing it for the right reason. And yet they still don't go and take action. Why? Because a lot of their fears get in the way, whether it's enemies, whether it's people like Harry who are telling you that you can't do it. I call them the little man, all the reasons why you're not going to win. Or maybe it's just that voice inside your own head telling them that you're not good enough and you can't. But I think the biggest thing most people are missing is just momentum. It's just momentum. Like when we started this, we weren't great either. You go back right. 20 years ago, Cyrus on the radio wasn't as polished, didn't have as good a voice. And you probably still had the good voice, but maybe the questions <laughs> weren't as good. There was no right. was trying to hit the airways, you know, a lot of fears and insecurities, but you did it. You did it. Yeah. And you kept going like 20 years later, who you are. And, and same thing with, with the videos that I made. My first video sucked. It was 350 videos, public videos that I made before I could watch my videos back because looking at them made me feel too embarrassed. Like I couldn't watch my own stuff back, but we started and we kept going. And I think the biggest thing for people that they're missing is just momentum. Like you just need to start. There's no perfect start. You just need to start. You need to get one foot out the door and say, I'm going to go off and do this. I'm going to learn. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to fall down. I'm going to get back up and I'm going to keep going, but you just need to start. What advice that you can give to um, a, a young and inspiring entrepreneur to be able to navigate of building a business and becoming successful at it? I think the most important thing is that you have to do the thing that you're excited by. I think uh, just to the last point, you got to do the thing that you love. The most important thing, if I, if I look at all the, all the people that I've covered and all the famous entrepreneurs we profiled, follow your passion, love what you do is the consistently the most common thing that pops up. And so you have to find the thing that you love, even if you don't know how you're going to make money at it yet. A lot of people start the other way. They look for a way to make money and then they do something that they don't love. And you can make a little bit of money, but you're never going to, you're never, never going to have a big impact. You're never going to do anything really solid. Um, so you have to love what you do. To learn the seven lessons from seven billionaires, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Nobody wants a car because horses are great and we're used to them and they can eat grass. And there's lots of grass all over the place and there's no gasoline that people can buy. So people are never going to get cars. Um, people did say that. You know? A way to slip into...